I woke up today feeling a strange sense of calm, and I don't really know why. I didn't wake up with anxiety, I didn't wake up stressed, I didn't wake up incredibly early. I just woke up. It was about 6.15, there was daylight, and it was strange. I just, I woke up and I, and I was lying there in bed, and I just was. My first thoughts didn't go to her and how she's doing post-surgery. My heart didn't feel gripped with anxiety. I was, I, I just, I was. One of my best friends sent, sent a link to a video overnight, and it was, funnily enough, it was Will Smith talking about how the difference between fault and responsibility, and one of the things he referenced was in a situation like mine, how even if the fault isn't mine, it's my responsibility to, to make a better life for myself. And I, you know, it's not the most profound sentiment, but it's the kind of thing you have to keep hearing over and over again until, until it sticks. And I don't know that it's stuck permanently, but it was just a good reminder of where I'm at right now isn't my fault. She did it, she did it all, and what I want is for her to fix it. But she's never gonna fix it. So it's my responsibility. And, and I know that. I have to fix my, no, I have to fix my life. I have to secure my future. I have to be okay. But for a few minutes this morning, when I first woke up, which is usually when I'm really stressed, for a few minutes, I just was. Not good or bad, just, just, I was there. So I'll take that as a win today. It may get worse. You know, after a little while I did wonder, like, oh, I wonder if she's doing okay. Yesterday had a pretty profound effect on me in terms of somebody worrying that I was very not okay when I disappeared for a little while. When they texted and I didn't text back quickly enough and then my voicemail box was full, which is weird. And then I was in therapy and just off the grid. Like, they were very, very worried about me. And that, that's been a twofold thing. One, it's really sweet because somebody cares about me that much and feeling cared about right now is super important. It also freaked me out a little because somebody thinks I'm capable of doing something like that. Even in my most heartbroken and exhausted, I am exhausted, you know, that the process takes forever and my heart is broken. I would, I would never do something like that to myself, never. And in the process of talking about that, I found out that people, that I was right in that some people are getting frustrated that I don't take their advice to the letter and I make missteps, so they've had to back off a little. And that hurts, you know, because then I feel like I have disappointed people in my, in my handling of my breakup. And I don't want to disappoint anybody else, you know? I, and that's a tough one to swallow. I can't do it any better. I'm, I'm doing this the best I can, and I'm trying to be as true to myself as I can. I had this initial feeling of, maybe I've turned a corner. Maybe this calm is, hey, stop pulling. Maybe this calm is the new me. Maybe, maybe, maybe something new is happening. God, that would be nice. I don't, I don't know that that's true, but there was something different this morning. Let's hope that keeps going. I'll see you in a bit. I don't know what's going on. It's definitely a weird feeling. I've been up for an hour and a half or so, and it's creeping into my heart a little. What's more on my mind this morning is still the whole thing that happened yesterday with the person that was really worried about me. I, I don't know what to do with that. After we talked yesterday, I wrote them a big text and just said, hey, you know, thank you so much. It means so much to me that, that you care so much about me and, you know, I wouldn't be nearly as good as I am without you. And I, I wrote a big thing and there was no response. And then this morning I wrote another text just saying like, hey, I've really been thinking about you. You know, are you doing okay? And there's not been a response. Granted, it's early, but I'm, I'm worried that they feel like they've gotten too involved with me or have too much of a stake in my game and are now going to to also back off and, and be like, whoa, yeah, that, that was intense. I should not be reacting that strongly. And my feelings on that are mixed. On the one hand, yeah, that was intense. Like, you can trust that I'm gonna be okay. But on the other hand, it, it would be sad if somebody sort of backed away from me because our level of involvement has gotten too intense. I, I, I don't know, I'm still trying to put words to that. I do look forward to a time at which my marriage situation isn't a topic of conversation. And my therapist said as much yesterday, she looks forward to a time and, and she doesn't think it's far off that emails from my wife, like the one I got the other night, that sort of rocked my foundation a little the other night, when they're just annoying. If I'm lucky enough 
to get in a relationship with somebody else and find love or feel love and, and be invested in something else. See, this is like a, like a, like a two-pronged conversation. If that whole scenario happens and then the woman who's still currently my wife were to email me something about like still loving me, then I could see it being annoying. But I honestly, swear to God, once, once we're divorced, when she moves away, I don't think I'll hear from her again. It's not her way. She won't cut ties and go. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to prepare myself for that because that level of, of seeming apathy crushes me, you know? To have somebody just, just stop. It's so funny, I'm stopped at the light right now that was in the first ever video I made when I was going to, to see a quiet place. And I remember sitting here, well, I remember from the video, sitting here saying, you know, it's gonna be a good day, I'm gonna turn it around, um, gonna hang out with my friends, blah, blah, blah. Little did I know on that day, like, mo like that was April 8th. So many months later, I would still be doing the same thing. Still be going through the breakup, still be heartbroken. I hate, 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 I hate this feeling of the passage of time. You know, the passage of time without doing good work on a relationship or creatively. Like, I'm just, I'm passing the time. I'm getting older every day. She's moving ahead, forging this new relationship, making future plans, doing all these things. And I'm just trying to figure out things I can do to pass the time of the day. And to that end, I am losing. I'm wasting my life. And that's the worst. That I that makes me feel sick. Because in my relationship, I, I valued every single day. And I worked every day to make our life good. And I'm not working every day now to make, I'm, I'm working every day to try to be okay. But it's not the same kind of work. It's not the same life improvement. I don't want that to be the biggest negative to come out of this. Um, wow, I gotta go. Yeah, more on that later. It went well. It wasn't a terribly hard class. I did 50 push-ups and stuff like that. I felt strong enough. I am tired. I, I just want, I want the struggle to go away. I just, I want it fixed, you know? I, I think that's the com complaining part of it. It's more amorphous today though. It's, I just, I want to feel happy and good. It, it's, today it's not necessarily pining for her. I am glad I went to bar method today. Uh, I just put on my breeches and I feel like my legs look really good. Right? It's kind of awesome. Yeah, there's a muscle right whoop, there's a muscle right there, huh. I mean, the lighting helps, but yeah, you know, you take the little wins where you can get them. So thank God for riding and bar method. Cool, I'll see you in a bit. I'm gonna just do like a little hyperlapse in my drive to the barn. So far, it's been a pretty good day. I had a good lesson. Yeah, I had a really good lesson. Vinny was in a good mood. It's just funny how sometimes you, you think you've got it down and then it's just not a great day. It is funny. I, I don't think about it when I'm on the horse. <laughs> Makes me want to stay on a horse all the time. It is breezy today. I'm walking down to the farthest part of the, the property to, to sort of test out the new drone in the wind to see how that goes. It's all just gonna take work, you know? It's constantly reminding myself that this is my life, this is the situation, this is the standard. I think seeing her twice this week and having that long interaction definitely didn't do any good for me. Definitely reminded me of the loss. So less of that, less of her. I should default to anger and rage, but I don't. I default to heartbreak and brokenness. I'm gonna give this a go. We're gonna launch from here, see how it goes. I'll let you know.
seem to go pretty well. It's windy and the thing is stable. It is, it's fast. It just, maybe because it's a bigger thing in the air, even though the speed is similar to the Mavic, it just, you get that little thrill of like, oh my God, that's going fast. So that's pretty darn fun. Okay, for better or worse, I'm going to try and go to the Grand Prix that's happening at the show park. Everybody is saying that the parking is dreadful. So I'm gonna drive there and see if I can park. Look at how heavenly the light looks on the screen. Isn't that wonderful? What does 475 square feet of living space actually feel like? Not much, I mean, I know not much, but like, is it, is it, do you just have to be flexible or is it madness? Is it something appropriate for somebody who doesn't have very much at all or where can I store my stuff? I don't have a lot of clothes, but I own a Christmas tree. <laughs> it, it's so, the night she broke up with me, the first night when she told me she had feelings for him and it was pretty clear we were breaking up, one of my fixations became the Christmas tree. I thought, we just bought this nice Christmas tree. Who's gonna get the Christmas tree that we bought for us? Who's gonna be our tree going forward? It's funny to me that the Christmas tree and the holidays have been a major thing for me the whole time. What am I gonna do for Christmas? I probably sound like I'm resistant to change. And I am. I'm resistant to change when I liked what what was. I'm no stranger to embracing new things, but to embrace new things when the old things were really good and just made your heart and soul feel happy and full, that's harder. And that's what I have to do. That's why breakups suck. I really like her family, all of them. I wish she didn't get them in the breakup. <laughs> you know, I wish, I wish I could go to their houses at Christmas and we could be like, ah, oh, it's too bad about her, huh? It really stinks to lose that part of my life too. Try and imagine a scenario where I meet someone soon and everything is even better than it is or than it was. I got an interesting piece of advice last night from a friend who's known me and my wife for a long time. The advice was based on, on the assumption or the understanding of the kind of relationship I had. A very hot, a very emotional, a very wild relationship. And the advice was basically, when you do date somebody else, it may seem less exciting. If you date somebody who's stable, it might not be as exciting as it was dating somebody who's less stable. But in the long run, <laughs> it will be better. And I, I get the thinking, you know, I, I understand what they're saying, except I was with my person for seven years and I made it work. For seven years, I maintained like the energy and like I, I was in it and I was, you know, committed and, and worked it and it was eccentric and bizarre and fun and odd and we had ups and downs, but I, always thought the ups outweighed the downs by a lot. I think really what I need is to be open-minded to whatever comes next and to not compare one to another to I need to make sure that my life is my life and I'm not comparing a new person to my old person and I'm authentically present in that relationship. It's not a rebound. It's not something to get me over her because I think that's really cruel to do to somebody. Well, I found a spot. I don't know if it's legit or not, but I don't know. It seems okay. I don't know what the Concord Equestrian Center is. Ah, let's give it a go. If somebody yells at me, I will apologize profusely and uh, be on my way. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think about her quite often and wonder how her surgery went and how her recovery is. I have to fight the impulse to do anything about it. I'm not her person anymore. Oh my god. Naughty. That was fun. I'm really glad I did that. I hung out with some people from my barn. Um, unexpected people and, and uh, younger people that I've taken lessons with and you know maybe that I, <laughs> that I judged in the, the horse competition yesterday so that was just kind of really funny. I was the judge and they're also sort of my peer group at the barn so 
I don't know, that cracks me up. I just did a flight with the new drone. It's cool, it's really, it's fast, and the camera's amazing. There's a tree back over there that I have loved ever since we first got the horse that we had. We did a trail ride and there's, there's a cliff that's maybe 30 feet high, and then on the top of that cliff is a tree that's just beautiful. Since the first time I, I've seen it, I, I thought, I wanna go back and shoot that tree. Like, I wanna shoot it well. I have a really good idea for a picture of of the tree with a rope swing, like kind of a fantasy scene with a rope swing where you swing out over space, and I think it could be a really cool picture. I was driving home from the show park, or the horse park tonight, and the sun's getting low in the sky and getting kind of golden, and I thought, God, I should, you know, I should put the drone up and just put, take some pictures. Then I was like, no, I should just go home. And then I thought, why? <laughs> why am I going home to, to be alone? <laughs> or stop and, and take the creative moment. There is nothing stopping me from pulling over, getting out of the car, putting the drone up, and shooting things I think are beautiful. And for some reason, I don't do that a lot of, a lot of times I think, ah, no, I should, I'll do it later. So I did it tonight, and I'm happy about that, and I'm gonna do that more. When I get that urge, when, when you get that creative urge, but you're at a crossroads of, should I, shouldn't I? Do it, just fucking do it. You do it. I'm gonna do it. Let's let's see what we can do. Let's let's not not do something for the sake of I don't even know like I can't even tell you why I was tempted not to. It was just that feeling of like I should get home. But why? Why not do the thing I really wanna do? Because you know, I'm gonna go home and look at the footage and I will have messed something. There will be parts where I was like, oh, that was dumb. I should have blah blah blah. But I'll learn from that. And the next time I get that sort of creative inspiration, I'm gonna do it better and I'm gonna make better work. And I think that's the lesson in this. Just just do it. Don't, don't not do it. Let's just fill tonight with double negatives. That's been the best thing that's happened in the past half hour. I made, I made a good time for myself. I have two time lapses running on my balcony right now. So, oh my God, hold on, hold on. Can you see the purples and the magentas? Oh, it is gorgeous tonight. Oh my God. And now my face, ha. It is just a beautiful night. Yeah, there's pink clouds and then there's like dark purpley ones moving underneath. I don't know, I feel okay. I had a good day up there. I'm glad I went. I'm glad I hung out with people. I got a new follower on Instagram. She's 11. That's okay, you know? <laughs> she likes my horse posts, so. Uh, good, good. Uh, <laughs> oh my God.